right okay so in the last class we discussed about the creative process right the creative process and innovation what is creativity creativity refers to the ability to develop new idea right it is the ability to develop new idea and innovation means the use of these idea okay so creativity means the ability to develop new idea and innovation means the use of these idea so that we may produce new things so basically for profit because we are talking in terms of business it will be for profit right so what is the creativity process the creative process okay so the creative process consists of four phases and the importance of these four phases is that they are overlapping okay they are overlapping and interacting that means uh, rather than it is not like phase 1 complete then we will start with phase 2 when phase 2 is complete we start with phase 3 no it will be overlap so phase, as soon no, as phase 1 is going on phase 2 might be happening okay? these things will happen simultaneously right so what is phase 1 phase 1 means unconscious scanning okay? so here we are reaching a situation or uh, a region which is beyond our consciousness and what is uh, consciousness means consciousness can be the awareness okay in malayalam we say it is bodha okay we are reaching somewhere else and how do we reach there it is required an absorption of the problem right so we are completely absorbed in the problem we are only thinking about that particular problem or the alternative or the, what is the decision to be made okay that we are only thinking about that particular scenario and we are completely engrossed in that at that moment we reach phase 1 okay so what happens is in practically the managers are working under time constraints so they will not have this kind of time okay, to come to be completely immersed in the problem completely immersed with the solution they will not have the time okay what they will do is most often they will take the decisions prematurely rather than dealing thoroughly with the ill defined problems okay so rather than dealing with the thoroughly uh, the problem they might be taking they might take decisions prematurely and this is because time constraint right the second phase is intuition okay intuition means it connects the unconscious with the conscious okay so we can say it is a sixth sense okay uh avabodham in malayalam okay andarnyanam like it is something sixth sense like so it starts a we is the unconscious and see whether it is uh, up to the mark or not or else we can have logical discussions okay? what i'll i put i put forward my idea to you okay so now you can question me okay what will happen this what will happen to that like that if we have a logical discussion finally we can have we can verify what you have understood right the four steps the first one is uh, going beyond consciousness right so unconscious scanning then intuition then insight and finally logical formulation right so insight needs to be tested through logical experiment now brainstorming brainstorming is a method right so the creativity thing creativity thing creative thing okay it facilitates promotes one of the best methods for promoting creative creative thinking so this method was developed by alex f osborn is named the 
are the brainstorming. And what is this process? It is the process of generating creative ideas and solutions through intensive and unrestricting group discussion. Okay. So you can so we'll be having a group discussion and you can say whatever you want related to the topic, whatever you want, you can say. Okay. It is un intensive and unrestricted. So you, you need not oh, hold back. You can openly you can say what is your thought about that. Okay. So here what is happening? Multiplication of ideas thought. So we are trying for idea multiplication. Okay. Uh, person A will give me an idea, person B will give me an idea, person C will give me an idea. within a short span of time have three ideas. Right? So we are having idea multiplication. Even though we say it is intensive and unrestrictive, there should be there some loss right? we are not going to fight right no hand to hand combat or anything. we are not going to fight but we will be having a structured discussion okay and what are the uh criteria which you have to follow one is no ideas are ever criticized you may not criticize an idea okay what what rubbish is saying person i can miss the when person i gives me an idea you cannot say what rubbish man this is not the it cannot be no you, you cannot do that. If, if you are ridiculing someone, that means uh, the other person will not come forward. Okay? He may have even better idea. Okay, he may not come forward out of out of the fear. Right? So you may not criticize any idea. Okay, and the more radical the ideas, the better. If you think outside the box, okay, it's something that is uh, we say, uh, we haven't dreamed about it. Okay. That kind of solution, we never dreamed about it that uh, that will occur like that. Go outside, think whatever you want, okay? go any way you want, and give get me an idea. So, radical more the radical the idea, the better. Then, quantity of idea production is plus. So, we need more and more ideas. See? Our aim is to idea multiplication, right? So, we need more and more ideas. So, everyone is encouraged. Come on, give me, tell me something. What can be done? See, you can be open, no one is going to judge you, right? Then improvement of ideas by others is encouraged. So we we said you cannot say you cannot ridicule someone because you said an idea. But what we can do is you can encourage, means improve the uh, ideas. Okay, encourage on the ideas. So if he gives, so you can say person A gave me an idea. So person B will say, okay, that's a good idea, but can we do it like this? Okay. So that then okay, that okay, good. That is can be. Person, so you can say, okay, okay, we can do that, or we can do this like that. We can I improve the idea that is good, that is okay, right? Clear the so creative thinking. Uh, whenever you asked about the creative process, write out the, the creative thinking, what are the phases involved, and uh, based on the marks, mention about brainstorming also, right? Clear now, we'll move on to the next module, module five. So module 5 is about staffing, right? So in the first module, we learned about uh, the introduction. We had an introduction to management, right? So we learned what is manager functions, manager roles, then what are the uh, right? different things to be chief, right? What is our goal and all, right? The next module, the second module, we learned about ethics. And then how management came to be, right? What we see today, how it came to the theories, McGregor theory, uh, Oshis theory, all these theories, all of them contributed to what we see today, right? Then uh, in the third module, we learned about planning. Okay, what how planning is done, what are the steps, what are the plan process, right? That was learned. And in the fourth module, we learned about organizing. Okay, how different departments are formed, right? Like that. And the fifth module, it's about staffing. So staffing, we have said earlier, right? What will, what does it mean? It means placing the right man for the right job. Briefly, we have said. Okay, right man for the right job. Now, when you are asked about staffing, you need to elaborate. Okay, now you are an expert in this topic, so you need to elaborate. Uh, once you study module five, even when the question comes from module one, you need to elaborate, right? So staffing, you know, it's a managerial function. Okay, staffing means it's a managerial function. So it is defined as filling and keeping filled the positions in an organized structure. Okay, so I need a site engineer. Okay, I need a site engineer. So I'll uh, hire a site engineer for the job. Then I need, uh, because my company is more working and it's moving forward, I will need that for site engineer till my company is there. So 
even if the site engineer whom, whom I hired now has quit, I need another one. Right? So I'm filling the uh, post of a site engineer and I, I'll keep there and always there, there will be a site engineer and that post. Okay. A civil engineer will be there as a site engineer. Okay. So it is defined as filling and keeping filled the positions in the organized structure. Okay. So it may be a site engineer, it may be a CEO, it may be a uh, it may be an MD, it may be a project manager, it can be, be a sweeper, it can be a labor, anyone. Okay. So at all stages, at all levels of the organization, we are hiring someone, we are filling the post and we will keep it filled. Okay. So that once that person feels, okay, I had an site engineer, but now I don't have. Will the, will the company work? No, right? So we have to fill them and keep them filled. Right? And now how is it done? So it is done by identifying the workforce requirement, inventorying the people available, recruiting, selecting, placing, promoting, appraising, planning the careers of, compensating and training, developing both candidates and current job holders so that they can accomplish their task effectively and efficiently. efficiently right? So what is the first thing? We need to identify the workforce requirement. So I need to identify whom I require. Okay? Do I, I need a site engineer? Do I need a site engineer or do I need a structural engineer for designing. So that is to be identified. Okay, Who I need? So identifying the workforce requirement. The next step is inventorying the people available. Right? So uh, who all are the people right now who all are working there in the company? Can some take someone take this position? Like that. Okay? So I am uh, considering who all are working there. Well, inventory. So I have uh, three site engineers. I have a project manager. I have two project managers. I have a fund finance manager. Like then, I'll invent. Uh, I'll inventory. I'll take. I'll make a list of who are working uh, working in the company. Okay. Next step is recruiting. So recruiting means I need a person. See, I need. We need a. I need a uh, civil engineer as a, as a site engineer. So I uh, what. Uh, so what does recruiting means? Recruiting means I need to search for. Right. I need to search for a suitable applicant, and the suitable applicant should also respond to me right they should also apply for them apply for the post and that's my uh, job right so uh, recruiting means i am uh, searching for suitable applicant plus i am make, making a condition i am con giving a condition for making a scenario so that they can apply for the job right so i'll be giving out ad i'll give you i'll may i'll make, call up my friend see i have a vacancy here do you have someone to fill someone who can fill this post I'll ask my employees. See, we have a post over here. Uh, have uh, some of your any one, one of your friends interested? So I am I am searching. Plus, I am also creating a uh, situation where they they will apply for the job. Right? That is recruiting. Then selecting. So once I uh, all the persons interested has come forward, now what will I do? I will uh, select the best best one among them. Best I will select the best candidate. So the applicant I will be selected. Then I will place them. Okay. So you have been placed the uh, the site engineer, right? Placing. Then after that I will have to based on the work I will promote them. Okay. I will appraise them. Appraise means appraisal means we are making a, a formal assessment. Okay. I am assessing the work. Is he good enough? Is he doing the job? So uh, like thank you. I Congratulating us to be done this day. in the measurement. Like then I will have formal business and that is appraisal. Plus planning, planning the career of. So if any law, what will plan? Yes. Now he's working at this office. Now what will I do? I'll next day I'll make him. Uh, I'll make. Site engineer, and then next time I'll make him a project manager. Right? I'll plan. Okay, I'll give him within one one or one or two years and make him a project manager. So he may stay with me for more time. So like that, I'll plan the career. Okay? In organization, we see we saw right. Different that uh, manager can be put in two years. He will be working in, or sometimes he will be working in marketing. And after that, he can be put in production. Then after that, he can be put in finance so that he can get idea of all the works. And finally, you can be promoted in a similar way. So I can, I'll plan the career. Okay. Then compensate, train or develop. Okay. So sometimes I will have to compensate for something. 
more subject training or development. See, uh, as we get, no, the softwares are getting developed and developed. We had a boom suddenly. Protestation came out, right? So in ten year back, ten year back, uh, nobody know uh, what protestation is or how protestation works and all. No, protestation is becoming more and more common. So every surveyor has to know about the protestation. So uh, if it is not known, we we'll send them, uh, train them with it. Okay, and now it is even more processed. Right? Now we are using GPS, right? Uh, GPS, portable GPS devices are there. So we are doing survey using. GPS of the GPS of the. So you have learned in geometrics, right? Uh, RTK, real time kinematic GPS, static GPS, different methods, right? So our employee may not know this thing. So what we will do? We will send them. Okay, you go train and develop yourself, right? So this also this is also part of staffing. Okay, uh, and what you have to understand is this is not done only for the candidates that is now okay, who have applied for the job. Also, the candidates also my so those who already have been working in the company may also have may not know this. So I'll then look into the profile and I'll say who all are required who all requires the listing. They will say that is both the candidates and the current job holders. Okay, both of all all these things are applicable applicable for both of them, right? The promotion, the appraisal, the planning of careers, compensating, training, development, everything is uh, everything is applicable for. Both a new, a new joining, and also an old staff also. Okay, and why do we do this? The, what is our aim? It is to accomplish their tasks effectively and efficiently. Okay, so you being a uh, site engineer, what are the tools you need to work effectively? So if you have, uh, if you lack in some way, so I'll help you develop it. Okay, that's the part of staffing. Clear? Staffing. Basically, we say it is placing right man for the right job. Now we let it, we let expand on that is it is filling and keeping filled the members uh keeping filled the positions in the organization. It is done by identifying the workforce requirement, inventorying people available, recruiting, selecting, placing, promoting, appraising, planning the careers, compensating, training, compensating, training, and uh, or developing. Okay, compensating and training. Because compensating here you know, compensating means. Uh, you have the skill. Okay, you may lack in somewhere. So I am helping you develop that particular skill. That is common sense. Okay, you develop. You are good in uh, designing. Okay, you are very good in designing, but you need to have a little bit of practical field experience. Also. So that will be added to it like that. Developing both candidates and so that they can accomplish the task effectively and efficiently. Right. Now, what is the process of staffing? The first one is planning. So we need to plan what is the Estimation of the number of staff required. So how many staff? Okay. So I have a seating capacity of this much. Okay. At a time, I can serve. I'm going to place 50 people. Okay. I'm going to place 50 people. So 50 tables will be there. Or, or say for 50, 50 tables are there. Suppose I'm going to open a restaurant with 50 tables. Okay. A big one. So I need how many cooks will be needed? Okay. How many servers, waiters will be needed? Cleaning staff is needed. Host is needed. Cashier. So these things all will be has to be accounted. Right? So if I am providing parcel, so I need a parcel bill counter. Right. So all these things have to be considered, and then I'll plan. I'll plan the. I'll estimate the number of staff required. So this much is the number of staff I need. Right. Then I'll recruit and select. So again, recruitment means I am. Searching for the uh, searching for an employee plus I am also making sure that their employee will so suitable good employees will apply for the job. Okay, so I will recruit and then select the employees. Then training and development. Okay, so uh, sometimes uh, a new employee comes, match with the what is going on. And so I this my reservation in some case. So I'll help him develop that. Then performance operation. So his performance is measured. Okay. Assessment of the work performed by the staff member. So I will assess the uh, how how would he do it? Whether the servers waiters are friendly towards the customers. If the waiters are rude to the customers, the customer will never come back. Okay, even I'll point out whether the waiters are behaving.
ikke en proper lytter. Jeg ved, at det er godt. Okay. Jeg ved, at det er godt. 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 Det Authority and power. Okay, authority and power. So power means it is the ability of individuals or groups to influence the belief or actions of other persons or groups. Okay, power means it's a, it's a, see if I uh, suppose if I can change, I can influence the behavior, belief or the actions of one person or a group of person. That means I have a power. Okay, I have power. Right, that is power. Okay, yeah, I I have my a group of my friends. If we can influence what other person is thinking or other person is doing, that means I have a power. Okay, that is power. Okay. Now what is authority? Authority is the right in a position. Okay. It's the right in a position to exercise discretion in making decisions with the others. But authority is different. Okay. Authority means it's again it's the power itself. But it's the power of the position. Okay. Me as a person, I may not have the power. But the position in which I sit, okay, the position commands power. It could be because I am sitting in this position, I can make decisions with that will affect, affect other. Okay, power and authority. Clear? Yeah. Power means it's my ability to make, ability to affect or change the beliefs or actions of some person. But authority means it is the, it is the power of the position where I am sitting. Okay. Their power, that position power, has power, and that gives me a right and ability to make decisions that will affect others. That is power, uh, that is authority, sorry. Okay, power and authority. Authority is form of power, and it is due to the position which I am sitting. Right? Clear? So, and what is responsibility? Responsibility it's the obligation of a subordinate to whom a duty has been assigned. So your boss has assigned your duty. Okay, your teacher has assigned your assignment. So now it is your responsibility to complete the assignment on time. Submit it on time so that maybe value done, you get your marks. Okay, that becomes your responsibility. Right? So responsibility, it is the obligation of a subordinate to whom a duty has been assigned. Okay. So according to Kuntz and O'Donnell, authority is the power to command others to act or not to act in a manner deemed by the person of the authority to further enterprise or department purpose. Okay. So what does it mean? Authority is the power to command others. Okay. To act or not to. Okay? You do this or you don't do. Okay. It's my power to command others in a manner which is deemed by the person of the authority. That is, I think it should be done. Okay. I I think it should be done or it shouldn't be done. Okay. Either it should or shouldn't. Because I think it should be done. I command others to do it. Okay. And that power is authority. Or that is power to command others to act or not to act in a manner deemed by the possessor of the authority. And why do I do that? To further or to for move forward, to increase my endemise or department purpose. To attain my department role. role. Okay. So authority, power, and responsibility. So power means it is the ability to change, affect the beliefs or actions of person or a group of person. Right? Uh, authority means it is the power of a position, which gives me the ability to make decisions that will affect others. And responsibility means it is my obligation. Okay, it's my obligation to do that particular task which has been assigned to me right yeah so just understand these three terms power authority um, responsibility so we will see power and authority is that's almost synonyms okay but you should know that there is a difference okay the next term is empowerment so from the term itself you can understand what is empowerment okay we are giving the power so it means that the employees managers or teams at all levels in the organization are given the power to make decisions without asking their superiors for permission. Okay. 
so what what is in see we have we we no we have we have seen the different levels of management right narrow levels uh flat level we see tall structure wide structure right there are different levels of management that means there are different uh person working okay what is happening in the empowerment the manager is sharing the his power okay the superior is sharing his power and what does it mean you share that is you can make your decisions okay you can make your own decision and you need not come and ask me for permission okay you can make your own decision and you need not come and ask me for the permission that is okay means the employees managers or teams at all levels in the organization are given the power to make decisions without asking their superiors for permission right you, you need not go and ask the superior sir can i do this or madam can i do this no you can make your own decision and why is this done what is the principle behind this the principle is those who are closest to the job are best able to make decisions provided that they have the required competencies okay see because i am the one who is doing the job right because i am the one who is doing the job i can or i know what is to be done those closest to the job are best able to make the decision Uh, in simple way, okay. Uh, you guys are using a laptop, right? Now we are learning. So I see. So you are seeing the charge is getting decreased, right? So once you know that beyond a certain limit, it goes, you switch on the charger, right? You need not ask anyone because you are the one who is handling. You know the charge is getting lower and lower, right? So you can switch it on. You don't you need you need not go and ask someone. Can I switch on the charger, right? Because you are the one who is working with the laptop. Similar way. Yeah, it's a very crude example, but I think it will suffice here, right? So, and what are the conditions you should have your required competencies that you should know that as much as beyond beyond this or beyond this limit, when the battery goes down, the uh, the laptop may switch off. It it is harmful for the laptop. Okay, that you should know. You should have the competency to make the decision. Okay, and if you have the competency, then you are allowed to make the decision. Because you are the one who is working with, okay. So empowerment means so here has to share the power, okay. And look at the term; it is sharing the power. It is not that he is giving you the power. You are just sharing, okay. Between you two, you have share the power and authority with the subordinates, okay. So so here is sharing the power and authority with the subordinates, right? So what does empowerment mean? Empower means That employees, managers, or teams at all level, okay, it may be lowest level, it may be highest level. Organization are given the power to make decisions without asking their superiors for permission. Okay, the underlying principle is the closest to task are best able to make decisions provided they have the required competency. Okay, so usually what will happen is in the top level it will be Hey, Mr. Man, they may not know the day-to-day -day activities, but you being an engineer, you being a site engineer, you know what is happening day-to-day. -day. So if you do not have the power, do not have the uh, power to take decisions at the right time, so it will always affect the work. Okay? So when you call up for permission, so he may not be available. Okay, so the decision might might have to be made at now, right now. Okay, so that has to be. But the condition is you should have competency. You should know what you are doing. So what is empowerment? Empowerment sharing. Okay, empowerment sharing of superior sharing is power with you guys. Okay, with the subordinate. Now the term is delegation of authority. So what is delegation? The sharing of power or authority with another for the performance of a certain task and duties is known as delegation of authority. Okay, empowerment means I being a subordinate is getting empowered. Okay, I being a subordinate is empowered. Okay, and delegation means I am the manager. I am the speaker. So I am giving my. I am sharing my. Sorry, not giving. I am sharing my authority of power with someone else, so that he can do the task. He can do the task. So authority is delegated when a superior gives a subordinate discretion to make decisions. So me being a uh, superior or the manager, I am giving my subordinate. Okay, you can decide on this thing. Okay. So by delegating authority. the manager does not escape from his responsibility but is also responsible for the performance of the subordinate right so suppose i am the manager and i have 10 tasks to perform 10 duties to be done okay so i feel 
this person person a person a can do the task okay so i'll give one of my tasks to person a okay so that just mean i am done with it okay now i am responsible for seeing that person a does this thing okay so when whenever my boss will ask okay uh, what happened what happened how uh, give me your results i can't say i have completed nine but one is with him he didn't complete no okay now because i am the one who shared my power with him now i became responsible for him so i must see to it that he completes his task okay so by delegating authority the manager does not escape from his responsibility but is also responsible for the performance of the subordinate okay so i must see that he does his work properly now what is the process of delegation so delegation involves was determining the results expected from a position okay. what is the result expected from a position and assigning task to position delegating authority for accomplishing with this task and holding the person in that position uh, responsible for accomplishment of the task okay so i have a, i have 10 tasks in turn so i am looking at uh, person who can do so i am determining whether this person okay a, a person is in the clerical post okay clerk Okay, can he do it? So I am determining the results expected from a person. Can the uh, person in the clerical post can do? Can he do this work? Okay. So once I feel he can do it, what I'll do? I what I'll do? I'll assign him the task. Okay. So I'll say, okay, come here, Mister A, come here. So I know you can do this thing. You have been in this position so long. So now you have to do this task. Okay. Now it has been assigned to him. Now what I do? I have to Give him the. I have to share my power with him, so he can make the decision, right? So I say, okay, you can make whatever decisions you want and do this task. Okay, I am delegating my authority to him. I am sharing my power, sharing my authority with him, right? Now, the next thing is what is I have to hold him responsible. Okay, so you have been given this task. You have ten days to complete it. You can make your own decision, but on the tenth day, I need the result. So I should make trust. I should make sure that this person is doing the job properly. Okay. So holding the person in that position responsible for the accomplishment of the task. Okay. What are the problems? First, I need to determine the result expected from a person. Can he do it? Do it. Okay. I need to decide on that. Okay. Then assign the task to the position. Okay. Then I'll assign in the task. Then I'll delegate my authority. I'll give up. I'll share my power with him. Okay, he can make the decisions. Then I'll make sure that he is doing the uh, task. Okay, because you are being given the power to do this, you want the authority to make decisions, so you need to complete the task, right? And now, what are the advantages of delegation? One is basis of effective functioning. Okay, so because uh, ma see, being a manager, he had to he had to do many things. So uh, if I can, I put. Give some of my work to someone else who is competent enough, and will help me function properly. So it will become more and more effective functioning, basis for effective function of the company. Then time saving. Again, uh, after the ten tasks, some tasks, some things will be very important, others will be less important. Okay. So if I can give my uh, less important task to someone else, and I can concentrate on the more, I can concentrate more on my important task, right? So it becomes more and more helpful. So I can save my time. Right, so it becomes time saving. So again, reduction of work also. Again, uh, I can concentrate on my important work, and I can uh, give the menial jobs or the less imp lesser important works to someone else. So I can uh, reduce my work. Then opportunity for development. So the person, the, the those who have who are receiving this thing, he can also the subordinate can also grow. Okay, so he's given an opportunity to develop. Then benefit of specialized service. See what will happen is suppose I see uh, I may be a, an engineer, okay? I may be a civil engineer, but when sometimes my task will need me to do something related to computers or electrical or mechanical, okay? So I may be able to do it, but if I could delegate my work to a mechanical engineer, so if I have a mechanical mechanical engineer under me who's working, and if I can give this work to me the mechanical engineer, he will be able to do it better than me, right? So I I have he will know what is the basis what is it I I need to have to spend more time on more work so I can get specialized service he being a mechanical engineer or him being a an MBA or him being a accountancy 
specialist. Okay, so I can get specialized service. Then enables affecting manager supervision. So I have uh, divided my task into uh, some, I have given some tasks to someone else. So I can have, I'll have more time. Okay, so I can have, I can put more effort to manager super, supervision. And then it is uh, developed in interest and initiative. initiative. Okay, interest and initiative means see, uh, my boss is giving me a job, he is giving me a task. So that means he is believing in me. In me, right? So that uh, the employee may be interested towards the job. Okay. So he thinks, he will think, okay, my boss has believed in me and he's given me this job. So I'll do it to the fullest extent. Okay. So that will give me an interest and he'll give some um, initiative to think out the box, do more work. Okay. So he'll give an interest and initiative to the work. Plus satisfaction to someone. It's again, the same thing. My boss is giving me a, giving me a job. So he's trusting me, he's giving me the authority. So that means subordinates can also work. And he not only the worker work is being assigned, he's also been as a assigned some authority also. Right? So he did not go to boss for each and everything. He can do it on on his own. So that gives him a sense of satisfaction. Then expansion and diversification of business activity. So more and more, if we can do this, okay, if we can uh, see earlier we said right, uh, specialized services can be obtained. So if we can obtain more and more people and more and more works can be done. So we have a chance for expansion. Okay, we can start new wings. Okay, this, this person is uh, supposed to be said earlier, a mechanical engineer, right? So mechanical engineer is doing the work very good, properly. So we can even more duties and start our own, own wing. Okay, a new uh, business can be started. So we can expand our business. Right? We can diversify. Okay. Okay. So, so delegation of authority means it is sharing of power or authority with another, so that. But certain works can be completed. Right? We will uh, stop right here. So please let me know if you have any doubts. First, we'll move on to attendance.